Who would you rather go to dinner with, William and Kate or Harry and Meghan? And tell us why. That's a bit rude of you guys to write that. <laughs> hey, I'm James Blunt and I'm taking cheap shots with Cosmo. Oh, that's good. There will be three rounds with five questions each. For every question, there's a drink. And one of those drinks is a cheap shot. So I either have to answer honestly or risk a hangover. How many shots do you think it usually takes for you to like, get a buzz going? I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm a small human being, maybe three. First round, I'll be taking shots of myself. Here I have four shots of Corona. One is a cheap beer, spiked with cheap whiskey. All right, let's do this. Your new memoir is called Loosely Based on a Made Up Story. Name one story you made up and why. Well, my lawyer told me to tell you that none of them are true, but they're all true. Are you telling me the truth? My lawyer tells you um, that's not the truth. It's a lie, but they're all true. Take a shot. <laughs> the rules are basically as loosely based on my book <laughs> as that. Oh, that's the one. Straight up. <clears throat> yeah, you put that nearest me, guys. That was a cheap trick, not a cheap shot. <clears throat> In 2014, you told The Guardian that you don't listen to your own music because you have better taste in that. What's a song that you wish you'd never recorded and why? Actually, it's a bit of a lie. I just don't like music at all. I mean, I have so many, so many songs that I probably shouldn't have recorded. And you want me to say you're beautiful, don't you? So that I say I wish I'd never recorded that, but f you, I love the song and it's made me a ton and I have a fancy house off the back of it couple of cars too. In fact, my wife wouldn't be with me without that song. I mean, after all, she's not after me for these looks and this <laughs> height, is it? It's for the gashy. I'll just take a shot. <laughs> you were known to roast haters on Twitter and were even asked by your record label to stop. Which of your comments pushed your label over the edge? They introduced me to Twitter and they asked me if I'd promote my music and I was a little confused as to what I should be doing exactly. So when people would post, I would post a reply. So when someone posted something like, James Blunt's my guilty pleasure, I would reply, mine's anal. <laughs> That's when they asked me to stop. In a statement regarding your upcoming documentary, One Brit Wonder, you said, in hindsight, I'm not sure letting them film this was a good idea. Name two things from your career that you regret. There are just so many. Where do I start? Firstly, we let them do a documentary. I'm British. I'd hoped I would come across as a kind of a British Tom Cruise, and it hasn't really come across that way. I turned up to the Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> and I shouldn't have bothered. When you were younger, you said you strictly ate meat to prove your manliness. What's your most toxic masculine trait? Well, exactly that. I just ate meat to prove my manliness, and in the process, caught scurvy. Round one completed. Round two, timed shots. I have 30 seconds to get these trivia questions right, or take a shot. These drinks are Moscow Mule shooters. Four are made with Belvedere, and one is mixed with vodka that's better for cleaning than consuming. I am ready. You were nominated for five Grammy Awards in 2007. What were the categories? Best new artist, best album, best song, uh, best looking, uh, squeakiest voice. I can't remember. Oh, that's good. That's really good. You were nominated for Best New Artist. Yes. Best Pop Vocal Album Back to Better. Yeah, I mean, it was a great vocal. Song of the Year, You're Beautiful. Obs. Best Male Pop Vocal Performance. Totally, and it was. If we're honest with each other, it was. Record of the Year, You're Beautiful. Definitely, that was a classic song. Can I have another without doing a question? In 2014, a teenager was fined 900 pounds for playing You're Beautiful and another song on repeat at full volume. What was the other song? Ooh, really tough question. Um, uh, let's go for the Crazy Frog song. You know, ding, da, da, ding, 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 ding. Okay, let's go for another guess. Bad Day, Daniel Powter. Could I get the third choice? You get, you have seven more seconds to Okay, hang on. Mm. I can't think of anything that really is a, as annoying as my own song. 
What was the song? Say La Vie by Bewitched. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, that's good, guys. Really, thank you. Thanks for having me. According to IMDb, your songs have been used in eight movies. Name five of them. Uh, P.S. I Love You. Uh, Star Wars. Uh, uh, there's something about Mary. Um, uh, the second Star Wars. Whatever it was called. I mean, if they did, I wasn't paid for it. Because I only know of one movie my song has been played in. And that went straight to DVD. So. <laughs> I mean, we don't know that. My manager and I don't know about that. Someone's ripped us off. I need a representative from the label here. Really, you reckon they've used the song in eight movies? No way. Project X. Classic movies which no one's heard of. Spring Breakdown. Brilliant. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. It's a boy girl thing. Ringing no bells here. I mean, it's weird, because some of these questions are about me and I don't know the answers. It's like I just don't know my own career at all in any way. I haven't been able to answer anything. Cheers. That was delicious, thank you. No, it's not. I'm English and have a remarkably low taste in alcohol. In your memoir, you talk about a fling you had with Lindsay Lohan. Um, can you name five movies she starred in? I didn't describe it exactly as that. It was a thing rather than a fling. Um, and uh, five movies she starred in. Well, we didn't make a movie, so that's what you're pushing for. <laughs> There's just... Mm, that was better, though. That was a better drink. Do you remember what ended that thing playing? Actually, I do. A security guard. Okay. I was removed from the building by a security guard. That's absolutely 100% true. Twice. But he hugged me on the way out the second time. You can read all about it in more detail in a new book called Loosely Based on a Made-Up Story. At the 2006 VMAs, you were nominated for Best Male Video. Who are the other nominees? Don't f***ing remember, because I won it! <laughs> but as it's the only thing I've won, I should be more modest. So, thank you for that, to the VMAs. Yeah. You don't remember who comes second, do you? <laughs> Just remember who came first. Yeah, that's what my wife always says to me as well. <laughs> Would you like to know who the other nominees were? No, we don't. <laughs> don't need to know. Round three. The category is cheap shots. Oof. I'll be taking literal cheap shots at everyone. That sounds kind of nasty. This game has been so innocent and fun until now. And now it's just kind of bitchy. The drinks are lemon drops. Four are made with Grey Goose. And the cheap one is from a $10 bottle of vodka. You've opened for a lot of big names over the years. List three of those tours, ranked from best to worst live performer. That's so mean of you guys. I have supported Elton John, Sheryl Crow, and Ed Sheeran. And I'm gonna say we'll do it in seniority rather than worst performer. Uh, it was Elton John, wow, how amazing to open for him. Sheryl Crow, phenomenal, incredible, what a support. And, and Ed, well, in the end, I ended up touring with him and having to share the same bed with him on the tour bus to keep him warm at night. He treated me that badly. Well, I think it's rather than worst ranking, it's worst treatment. I was treated very well by Elton. With Cheryl, she kept me uh, cosy, whereas Ed, I had to go in the bottom of the bed. Did you do it again with Ed? I would absolutely sleep with Ed again. Uh, not, probably not tour again. But... Oh, look, here's name comes up again. You've worked with, performed with, and are close friends with Ed Sheeran. What is your least favourite Ed Sheeran song? Shape of You. Straight up. I hate it, because I'm just really jealous of you, you little bastard. How do you write such a good pop song? I played my new single in front of him, and he played his, and I thought, well, f*** you. In an Esquire interview, you said the Rolling Stones had never had a hit like You're Beautiful. Who's another artist still searching for their hit, and why? You know, Ed's had his big one. I was signed by Linda Perry, she just had the one, didn't she? Sorry, Linda. I mean, if the Stones are desperate for a, looking for a hit, then pretty much everyone is, isn't it? Sorry, before. You name drop a lot of celebrities. That's a bit rude of you guys to write that. I just mentioned a lot of celebrities in your new book, loosely based on a made-up story, out now. What's one celebrity story you didn't include, and why didn't it make the cut? Well, 
because when I wear amongst friends. <laughs> I did find myself in a loo cubicle <laughs> once. Final question in round three. You and your wife have hung out with the royals and even attended Harry and Meghan's wedding in 2018. Who would you rather go to dinner with, William and Kate or Harry and Meghan? And tell us why. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you and good night. This has been Cheap Shots. The reason I'm here is I'm flogging a book called Loosely Based on a Made-Up Story. Get it. I've got an album out too. You know me, don't get it. It's called Wish You Were Here. No, it wasn't, that's by Pink Floyd. <laughs> <laughs>